Welcome to the Kanban Board App in Gato tutorial. In this tutorial series, you will learn about theming, user interface design, loading and saving data, drag and drop and much more in Gato. If you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe it's free and helps the videos reach more people. Don't forget to like too. So let's get started with this video. Let's make the color label interactive. Firstly we need to add a script to it. Right click the color label node, and click attach script. I am saving all the scripts in a separate folder called scripts. On the first line type tool. This will make this script a tool script, which means that it will update lib in the editor. So instead of running the scene every time, we can see the changes directly in the editor. The color label will have two properties one is the color and the other is the text. We can use export variables for this. These variables will show in the inspector so we can modify them easily. Currently, the variables are there, but it is not updating the UI. We have to manually update it using signals. Declare A on update signal in the script. This will be called whenever the UI should update. In the init function, we have to connect this signal to some function in the script. Let's also declare that function. Here first, let's change the background color of the color label to the color variable. Since the color label is a panel container, we need to update its style box. Let's quickly save the style box to a file first. So click on the style box and click save. Then in the script, we can load it and make a duplicate version of it. This is to ensure that every color label will have its style box. Don't forget to add self in the connect function. Now once we have the style box we can set its background color to the color variable. The only thing left is now to emit the on update signal when the color value changes. Luckily Gato has setters for that. After the color type set get and set color. Then declare that function. In this function, we first set the color to the new color value. And then we emit the on update signal which will run the onUpdate function to update the UI. Also, don't forget to set the style box to the new style box. The function add style box override does just that. The first parameter is the style box name in the node, and the second is the new style box. As you can see, the background color updates as we change the color variable. Let's do the same for the text also. Again declare a setter for the text variable. Then declare the setText function. Here we do the same, first set the text variable to the new text. And then emit the onUpdate signal.
Now in the on update function, we need to update the labels text. There are two cases here, one where is some text and another when there is no text. To check this I'm using text.link greater than zero. That means we have some text so we can update the text of the label. Note that we also want to hide or show the margin container based on whether the text is there or not. In the end, I set the color labels visible to false, and then in call deferred, I set it back to true. This is required for recalculating the size of the panel container. Nice, we can update the color label using these variables in the inspector. I want to also make the corner radius smaller when there is some text. Move this line below the if statement. Here in the if statement we can update the corner radius. I'm setting all the corners to 5 pixels if there is some text, otherwise, it will be 10 pixels. It's just a small change. Now let's test the color label, and the home scene. Click the chain icon to instance the color label scene. In the size flags, disable fill. It all works as expected. That's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on push notifications if you haven't already so you don't miss a new video. Do like and comment on the video too.